Often it's the case we don't recognize the things that are right underneath our noses. And my favorite thing to do is make videos about topics that other people don't cover. I guess because everybody's so busy shilling and posting affiliate links and trying to line their pockets, they, they're too busy actually just trying to give like information to be helpful. God forbid that, you know, that was what a YouTube's original purpose was, is not for people to line their pockets with affiliate links, but to actually give helpful information. Um, what a novel concept. <laughs> ISO, getting on topic. ISO. Um, as I uh, used to skydive all the time, they say that, uh, you know, you're just as dead from 2,000 foot fall as you are from a 20,000 foot fall. And we'd also say that the fall is not that which killed you, but rather the sudden deceleration. Kind of euphemistic, but I mean, it's not ISO. People are always talking about, ah, oh, bad. Bad ISO performance, not meaning this camera, but any camera in general. Talk about the ISO performance on their camera being bad. Well, it's not ISO. I got high ISO issues. Well, how's the high ISO performance on that camera? Let me repeat that. I've said this in countless videos, but this is not the main point, which I'm about to get to here in just a few seconds. ISO is not connected to exposure in digital photography. Okay? Did I make that very succinct? ISO is not part of exposure in digital photography. You actually have gain and time and SNR, single to noise ratio, gain, i.e. aperture, and time, which is, of course, shutter speed. ISO is not connected to exposure. Depending on the, uh, the sensor and the design of the camera, um, the uh, applied gain, which is what ISO is, is applied just before the analog to digital converters or after the analog to digital converters. But it doesn't matter where ISO is applied, it is gain applied to the shot that's already taken. Now, taken is an interesting word. Taken means the shot is already done. Okay? ISO is applied after the shot's already done. If ISO is applied after the shot's already done, which it is 1,000% of the time, regardless of which camera you use, this means that ISO is not connected to exposure. High ISO is not what is killing your shot or how it looks. And of course, I know about all the noise reduction software. And noise actually does have set frequencies, uh, depending on the camera manufacturer. Uh, high ISO noise reduction is applied. And of course, you do a lot better job in post-production. And there are various, like, uh, denoise projects and topaz that also do noise reduction, but it's not the high ISO noise that it's killing the shot. It is, wait for it, this is the crux of this video, insufficient exposure. You see? Because ISO is not connected to exposure. What's causing the shot to look grainy and <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's insufficient exposure. Now you think, now to some of you, this is going to be like, well, duh. But to most people, it's kind of one of those right underneath your nose, obvious things that has never passed through their mind. They've not thought about this whatsoever. When you're choking the shot of sufficient gain, which is no different than like listening to music from a radio station that's too far away as you're driving down the road. Of course, nobody listens to radio stations anymore, though, do they? But anyway, the point is the same. Or you have a bad antenna, or like a broken antenna. Um, it's all about S and R. It's all about sufficient exposure. This is also why ETTR, or uh, exposing to the right, or uh, image saturation, I'm not talking about clipping your highlights, I'm talking about sensor saturation. You really, ultimately, and no one can refute this, nobody, you can talk to any famous photographer that you respect and say, hey, this fat tattooed guy on YouTube said, blah, blah, blah. is he right? Nobody that you talk to is going to be able to de deny this, and I've said this before. There is absolutely no downside and a thousand upsides to sensor saturation. What does that mean? Now, obviously, you need to sculpt your lighting however you want it to look, but sensor saturation means saturating the sensor as much as possible. You're giving, applying as much detail, not only, obviously, to the highlights, which you're not clipping. I'm not talking about clipping highlights, but you're adding as much intertonal detail or just detail in general to the shadows. You can never manifest something that was never captured to begin with. Well, sure, I could raise my shot. You could do all sorts of stuff in post-production, but you actually should be exposing your shot in post-production. You need to be saturating your shot in your camera, the maximum allowable possible. This has nothing to do with sculpting the light. Sculpting the light has to do with the aesthetics of how you want the shot to look. Say multiple, three different lights, primary light, a hair light, a background light, however much lighting you need to make the shot appear how you want. But this has nothing to do with wissy wig. And of course, people get lazy with mirrorless cameras looking through the viewfinder. 
sensor saturation. Let me repeat this once again, the entire crux of this video, because people just never mention this to me, and it is an incredibly important point. High ISO is not what's killing your shot, okay? It's insufficient exposure. But what's the difference between high ISO and insufficient exposure? Now, here's the trick question. Answer me this, and I'll do like a two-second pause. What's the difference between high ISO shot and insufficient exposure? What's the difference? There's zero difference. There's absolutely no difference between the two. Let's just analyze it a second. What's the difference between high ISO and insufficient exposure? As far as a noisy image, like, yeah, you know, I, know, I could fix this in post, I could do this and that. Yeah, we all know you can do that, okay? Everybody knows that. What's the difference? Because ISO is not connected to exposure, there's no difference between a high ISO shot, okay, okay, no difference between a high ISO shot and insufficient exposure. In other words, what is the insufficient exposure? Let's say you have a, a mostly uh, lit, evenly lit scene where you don't have any issues between too much dynamic range, like what's well, really bright spots down here and some really dark areas here. So matrix metering would be like dead on accurate and you got your camera in manual and you're like, you know what I'm gonna do? As my camera tells me, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to drop it down in four stops. <laughs> I'm going to underexpose it two, three, four stops. Let's say four stops. Okay? What's the difference? There's no difference between a high ISO shot and insufficient exposure. What you're doing is you're choking the shot of sufficient gain. You know what antenna gain is? They used to say, of course, I'm a ham radio operator. They used to be a ham radio operator. Sufficient gain. Like, you're coming in five by five. You hear that on TV shows or like truckers would be talking. You know, they'd be using a 10 meter radios with a big whip antenna. You're coming in five by five, buddy. In other words, the gain is really good. You got a good antenna, you got good signal strength. Um, of course, it depends on the ionosphere as far as what sort of uh, you know, power you're putting out and bounce and line of sight for signal transmission, but that has to do with ham radio. That's nothing to do with photography. You're choking the shot of sufficient gain. Like I said, this is, yeah, ISO is not connected to exposure. People understand that when they're bitching about, ah, so-and-so camera, the high ISO sucks on it. You know, I can fix it in post. I could use Topaz to remove the noise. I, yeah, this is all true. But you're bitching about something that is not connected to exposure. People love to talk about the exposure triangle, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. Exposure triangles. So ISO. Now, ISO in film photography actually was a physical entity. Grain size. Silver halide grain size. ISO was actually real. ISO, ASA. It was real for film. ISO is not real for digital photography because real would actually be connected to exposure. So just remember that, and it will actually plant a seed in your mind of comprehension that you should be using A, the lowest possible ISO that you can absolutely, undeniably get away with. Like, I know I can uh, slam this shot every time. I'm not going to have slow shutter speed shake issues. Um, I'm not a person that actually complains about, uh, you know, uh, uh, grain, actually some of my favorite shots in the world are grainy, high SO, amazing shots. So I'm not a person that actually bitches about grain. Um, but when you complain about it, just realize what you're actually complaining about is, I'm going to replace someone's words, and I hear this a thousand times. So, ah, man, man, this camera, man, man, the high ISO sucks. What they're really saying, you know, like a translator, use Google Translate. I'm going to translate nonsense, or BS, into reality. I don't have this camera, high ISO, blah. No, 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 let's translate that. I choked the shot that I took of sufficient exposure, and it's really noisy. I underexposed the shot by four stops. What they originally said before I translated it from BS to reality? <laughs> Someone said originally, Ah, I saw it. This camera is not that good. Now let's translate that. Yep, 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 yep. Google Translate. I choked the shot of sufficient. I underexposed the shot four stops. <laughs> That's. So what's the difference between those two things? Absolutely nothing. Because let's say it again one last time before I do a mic drop. Say it again. ISO is not exposure. Oh, Maria Patria and Filii and Spiritus Sancti. 
Amen. <laughs> that was Latin, by the way. <sighs> ISO is not part of exposure. So next time you complain about high ISO and so and so camera, it was really dark outside. I had to crank up my ISO. Oh, you, you you choked the shot of sufficient gain. Yeah, you you choked the shot of light necessary to make a less grainy image. So well, yeah, you know. I think I made that clear, you yeah. know. Someone's going to say, you know, you're kind of arrogant in this video. Oh, really? I wasn't being arrogant. I was just being, I was being snarky. What's the difference? We call that a distinction without a difference, right? Maybe, maybe true, maybe true. Snarky. Anyway, thank you so much for watching me like these videos. You always click the link below. Tell me how much you hate me. Send me a dirty email. Say, I hate you. Me and my buddies get together and we talk about how much we hate you. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you too, girlfriend. Namaste.